You're watching The Ready Writer, a show where I get to speak to writers of all different genres, mediums, and experiences. The Ready Writer. Are you ready? Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Ready Writer. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's guest is Ron F. Richard. Let's get started. So you have a book out. Um, is writing or being an author something you um, thought you were going to be as a child, or was this something that happened without you even knowing? No, it came later in life, actually. I've, uh, I've written a lot of articles for magazines and for medical journals and clinical papers, but I'd never written a, a book before. So this is kind of a late bloomer, I guess, in terms of be, becoming an author. Uh, no, never too late. So what was it that said, I want to write a book or I need to write a book? What was the inspiration behind doing that? Well, this particular book, uh, it was kind of, uh, the thought was generated via a, a lecture I did at Stanford University for uh, through the business administration group, but it was focusing on uh, clinicians and doctors who have good ideas about different things they'd like to invent, but getting an invention into the medical ecosystem is, is pretty difficult. There's a lot of different moving pieces and parts to that. So after I did the talk, I had a number of doctors contact me and uh, commented how much they enjoyed the talk and uh, were interested in uh, working with me. Uh, either in consulting or whatever, but uh, getting their inventions from, uh, you know, just a piece of paper that they've drawn up an idea on to actually commercialization. So I've been pretty fortunate and been, been able to help uh, several different clinicians and doctors accomplish those goals. Amazing. Um, <clears throat> what was your publishing process like? being that this wasn't something necessarily you wanted to do, um, how did you get in the process and what were some shock, shocking um, stuff you found out that you weren't aware you had to know about publishing? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I'm a musician and I've, I've published a, a lot of different songs that I've written and copyrighted and uh, trademarked different things. So I had some experience with that, both uh, in the, the music industry but also in the medical world where I've had to copyright and trademark or patent things. In terms of publishing a book, uh, I had to have someone help me with that. So I hired a, actually a consultant out of Chicago who uh, walked me through the process. So if you've never done it before, I used a company called Boker. Uh, and it's pretty simple once you kind of figure out how to fill out all the forms and everything. But like to, for instance, I'll hold up my book here. You have to have you know, different like barcodes and all these different types of things. If you're going to put your book on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, those are the, the critical components that they look for in order for your book to be sold or posted online. So those were a few things that uh, I'd never, never done before. They were actually pretty easy. But again, I, I have to say, I, I had a lot of help from that consultant up in Chicago. Great. So Someday is Today is the title of the book. Explain right. just a little bit what we can expect if, when we read it. Yeah, well, again, it kind of goes back to one of the doctors I was talking to. Uh, he said, you know, I've got a lot of really good ideas, but they just sit in my coffee cup. Uh, I can't get them out of my coffee cup. I'll sit there at my desk get in my office at the hospital and in the morning, I'm thinking about different things that I could, you know, invent and, and help patients uh, in terms of improving outcomes, but I just can't get it out of the coffee cup. So that's the subtitle of the book, but some days is today really is to take action. Uh, if you have an idea, don't sit on it, don't leave it, you know, in the closet or whatever, because a lot of times when I talk to inventors, one comment they'll say is, um, I saw something at the hospital that I, I really, I thought I invented it several years ago, but I never took the steps or the action to it. And now it's on the market. So I just kind of kicked myself that I didn't follow through with it. And, and you see that not just in the medical industry, but you talk to people all the time when they see something out in public, they'll say, 
Well, I came up with that idea four or five years ago, but they didn't do anything about it. So some days today is kind of proactive. Let's take action and uh, get your ideas on the market. It's not that tough. You know, just like I talked about getting my book published, there's pl plenty of people out there that can help you if, if you're really motivated and you want help. So tell us more about your consulting services and inventions. Yeah, back in 2012, I started my consulting services and my, my company, we specialize in mostly respiratory and sleep uh, devices. Uh, we also do uh, help with software uh, programming for telehealth and telemedicine um, components. But primarily we do uh, everything from engineering uh, mechanical, electrical engineering, all the way through to uh, like a project launch, product launch. We do a lot of uh, marketing and um, help people kind of really hone in on what's the target market, what the pricing should be for their products, you know, how to evaluate uh, who's the, who's going to be the, the early adopters for a product. And, um, you know, just kind of do a general top to bottom analysis so that they can get to market and, and you know, have a better chance of success because a lot of products actually get on the market and they don't, don't do that well. About eight out of 10 have moderate to low success rates because they don't have a, enough planning put in place uh, for the background. So that's what our, our company does. I have uh, probably 10 different uh, consultants that work with me consistently over the past uh, many years that um, they cover a lot of ground and do a lot of different things in terms of like I talked about engineering, software, marketing, graphic design, uh, websites, and just pretty much whatever you need. Right. So give some advice on, because we're taught when we go to school, we go to college and when you go to a job, um, apply for a job, they basically tell you, you have to know everything before you get started. You have to have this many years of experience and you have to have this degree and you got to have this, you got to know how to use this software and everything is you got to know, no, no. So by the time someone has this great idea for an invention or a copyright or a song or whatever, they start saying, well, I don't have the degree, so I can't do it. I don't have the knowledge, so I can't do it. I don't have this. And, but the most successful people start out by not knowing. So how, what are some suggestions you can give people to get over that fear of not going forth because they're lacking knowledge? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and a lot of, you know, I'd say probably world-class inventors don't have the technical background, but you know what they have is they're fearless. Um, they, they don't, they don't, they're not afraid of failing. And, and that's what I tell uh, clinicians and doctors that I work with and do consulting. Don't be afraid to fail uh, because, you know, like I said earlier, there's lots of people that we can bring in and help you in areas where you may not have the expertise. But the, the general thought and focus is if you have a good idea, let's, you know, first test it and see, you know, how it fits or it would work in the marketplace, but don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid to ask other people for help in areas that you may not be strong at. So that's, that's a big part of my book. And, and there's a chapter I write uh, I wrote in there about forming a team and a team would consist, let's say if you're a doctor, you might be, you might have a specialty in uh, sleep medicine or cardiovascular. So, you know, everything there is to know about, you know, the disease, the state, the state of the disease, the progression of it and all that, but you don't know, uh, and you've got an idea and you can design it, but you're afraid to go forward because you may appear to be weak or you, you're not knowledgeable enough to do the engineering part of it. So you're going to have to hire an engineer to help help you design the prototypes. So things like that, you know, again, goes back to you, you have to be somewhat fearless, but you also have to let your ego kind of just put it in the background and, and then move forward and look for the right team members to uh, to move forward with your, your project. Great. So you mentioned earlier that you have experience in the music business. So your past experience, did that play any part in your medical device career? Did you, any of did they overlap by any chance? Yeah, I was really fortunate to, uh, when I was doing work at Stanford in particular, I got to meet some doctors who actually were, uh, were musicians and had toured and traveled with 
people like Quincy Jones and uh, Etta James and Stan Getz and a bunch of different musicians. And then I eventually also, uh, through <clears throat> business associate, uh, through one of the universities, got to meet up with some of the members of the Grateful Dead and I got to play music with them. So I play saxophone, flute, harmonic, and percussion. I write music, and uh, I was just fortunate enough that my medical uh, background overlapped with people that were in the medical background who also had a, a big interest in music and had also been professional musicians and toured and traveled and played a lot. But <clears throat> it's kind of interesting how I've worked all over the world and with different uh, medical types of projects. And oftentimes I do find people in the medical industry, I don't, <clears throat> don't know why, but they have either a keen interest in music or they, they're also musicians. So that creates uh, kind of a common bond. It doesn't matter if we speak the same language. It's kind of funny. I played some music a couple of weeks ago with uh, some people from China, Middle Eastern type music, and they spoke no English. So we sat down and we started talking kind of, you know, hand signals and we played uh, two or three really great songs together without speaking any English and I don't know any Chinese really. So music is just one of these things that can uh, uh, be kind of a common, I guess, a common denominator for both uh, medical professionals as well as musicians. Yes, it's definitely the um, <clears throat> universal language. Right. Yeah, that's it. So you've been involved in several managing um, different companies in the healthcare industry. Um, tell us some of the things you've learned, some of the things you've gained, some mistakes you made, um, failures, successes. Yeah, I, that's part of the book, too. It's talking about, you know, my successes and failures. I've been fortunate enough to launch uh, over 30 or 40 different products that have sold over a billion, billion dollars to date in sales. Uh, but there were a few, I'd have to say, that <clears throat> and I learned more from my failures than I did from my successes, to be honest. I had a couple projects that took too long. They cost too much money, and actually, by the time we got the projects finished and we're ready to launch them. Competitors had better products at a lower cost and we ended up either not launching the product or having to scrap basically the project and start over. And that cost millions of dollars. So uh, it's not the amount of money, uh, obviously it costs a lot of money to make projects and do products, but the, the takeaway is learn from your failures. Those are, those are really important. Uh, steps in your career, I believe, to uh, maturing as an inventor or a person that's launching a lot of projects or products like I've done. And, uh, you know, do, <clears throat> do an analysis, you know, and look back, you know, why did it take longer than we thought? What, what obstacles did we run into or what did we not really prepare for that we could have maybe done a little bit better job in terms of understanding uh, if we ran into those types of issues? Uh, how it would extend the, the project timeline. And when that happens, you, the burn rate and all the money that you spend also increases exponentially. So a follow-up question, <clears throat> as you said, sometimes the competitor came along with a diff, uh, better project. Um, so how does that work with patenting? Because if, did you patent your, your, that invention first? Because it seems like if you already had a patent for it, no one else could come along and do the same thing and copy it <clears throat> yeah there it's kind of tricky you can file patents and you know the first step is patent pending and then you go into disclosure at some point when the patent is actually uh, granted through the uspto so between that the initial filing and let's say by the time you actually get a patent granted uh, there could be two or three i've had heck, actually i've had some patents take as long as four years believe it or not, to get through the whole process. So in that four-year time frame, other companies can come in and file a variation on a patent and then come out with a product that's pretty similar but has one unique feature to it that, uh, that that's part of the, the patent. So that's one thing I, in my book I talk about is uh, before you embark on doing a, a project, 
make sure you do the most thorough patent search possible, but that still doesn't guarantee uh, that someone won't come out maybe almost at the same time you come on the market with your product, they're going to release a product. And that's where you have, uh, and in my, my example in the book, one of the projects I worked on, that actually did happen. We came out with a pro product, another company came out with a product, and instead of spending a lot of money on lawyers, we used our common sense and said, well, you know, what we really are here for is to help patients and improve outcomes in the quality of life. Why don't we do a cross licensing agreement? And you, you launch your product, we'll launch our product and, you know, we'll share in some of the royalties or whatever, but your sales are your sales, our sales are our sales. And, you know, you have your sales force, we have our sales force, whoever wins, wins, you know, in terms of market share, whatever. And that actually turned out to be pretty good because then people had a choice. Patients had choices, doctors had choices. They could pick our product or the competitor's product. But the big thing is we didn't spend millions of dollars and lots of time suing each other. And that's one thing I encourage in the book too, is try to work out things if there are patent issues without attorneys as much as possible. Great. So being in the music business, the medical business, and the patent business, I'm sure you have a lot of experience. Do you foresee another book coming forth? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually working on a medical uh, kind of a, it's a medical book, uh, but it, it's going to be more it has science fiction uh, combined with uh, drama and sort of a mystery uh, component to it. So I'm I'm about 90% done with that. So that'll be the next book that I publish uh, probably will come out sometime later, early next year is what I'm targeting like 2022. Sounds fun. Sounds fun. Yeah, should be fun. So as, um, I don't know if you're still a musician, but um, how has the um, pandemic changed your way of doing business all around? Well, the music business, uh, yeah, I'm still a musician. I toured up until March last year, and then all of our tours were canceled. Uh, so I haven't done any live shows uh, since March of, uh, what did that have been, 2020. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I miss playing live, but, you know, things are starting to open back up here in California, and I expect to get, you know, back on stage again, you know, at some point. The The... In the medical business, the big impact is hospitals are not allowing uh, sales reps or people to come in and talk about new new products. You know, there's been these lockdowns and all these things. So uh, that's starting to loosen up. And I've actually got a whole new medical product line that I'll be launching in June. And the sales reps that we're working with now, if you have a COVID shot, you can easily go into a hospital and work with hospital staff to do training and in-services. So, uh, but prior to that, the products I've been launching, we were doing it all through uh, Zoom or through a digital format using PowerPoint and videos and digital assets to do the training. And uh, that seemed to work okay, uh, but it doesn't replace the face-to-face -face kind of interaction that you can have with a nurse or a doctor being there right in the hospital. So that's been the challenges uh, on the medical side and on the music side. Okay, and my last question for you today, if you had the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with an author that was inspiring to you, whether they be dead or alive, who would it be? That would probably be William Buckley. I met him, uh, fortunately I did meet him before he died. We were on the same flight together. We actually sat next to each other and I got to talk to him. But uh, yeah, William F. Buckley, what to me was a really interesting guy. He was a good writer, a good speaker, and uh, would have been somebody that I would have enjoyed having a lunch with. Hello everyone, my name is Ron Richard. And I've just published a new book that I want to share with you. It's called Someday Is Today. Get your ideas out of your coffee cup. And the way I went about getting this published and the idea for it is I was invited to do a talk at Stanford a few years ago uh, for doctors who wanted to get their ideas out of their coffee cup and get their 
inventions to market. So uh, you can see I've got many patents that are here behind me, but my very first invention was when I was a respiratory therapist and I invented a communication board so that people that were on ventilators could communicate with their staff and family. I know this is simple, but it's something that was really needed and people uh, benefited from. So let me help you get your inventions on the market as well. And I hope you have a great day and again, check out some days today. Thank you. That is all the time we have for you today on The Ready Writer. I want to thank our guest, Ron F. Richard, for stopping on by. And for you, the audience, for watching. Thank you. Have a great day.